Okay, everyone, so on the second week of the third class, we have to take stock in what we have. We've got this project that just about two and a half months ago we started uh, setting up a framework, a foundation in HTML. Uh, jQuery Mobile is our foundation. Uh, we talked a lot about HTML, CSS, JavaScript. There's still plenty more to learn in each of those, of course. Uh, then we went on to setting up our foundation for uh, doing development in Android. And uh, as we've continued with those concepts, we've seen that opens up a whole world of things that we can do as well with Android development. We have Cordova which allows us to tap into features of our device. Um, we have to then decide at a certain point. We have to figure out if we are at MVP. Now, in the world of app development, what does MVP stand for? Anyone care to venture my trick question? Well, in the world of app design, it's minimum viable product not the other MVP that you think. Minimum viable product. This is something that you have to decide about at what point is my product viable? What's the minimum point that my product is viable? And by that I mean when can I get it out of alpha stage, beta stage, when can I start to get it out to people? Right now we're, we're, we're in alpha <coughs> testing. You probably heard of beta testing. We're in alpha testing. It's really just for us working on it. Beta testing is then we get other people to check it out, help us debug it, and, and so forth. Then we've got, you know, release to the public and such. So we could be working on our project a long time to get it quote unquote perfect, but there's always going to be something new or different. Maybe we get some more knowledge and we want to change our project, and then okay, we're going to hold <coughs> off a little bit more till that's perfect. Then we get some feedback from people, okay, we'll hold off until that's perfect. Well, perfection then is unattainable. Everything that is released, even big name apps, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of that, there's always a new version of it every once in a while, bug fixes and so forth. But all of those had a minimum viable product. At a certain point, it can be released to people. So there's still plenty that we can do with our app, of course. But we're going to try to get to MVP today. We're going to try to get to the point where I think it's done so we can start to get it out to people. <coughs> so we'll need to put uh, some finishing touches and such on the app. We will then need to start to talk about, okay, well, what's the next steps to start to get it to an app store? So I have a new handout that I'll give you in a little while about that, creating a developer certificate, signing our project and publishing it as a final compiled version. Uh, we've been working this whole time with a debug version of our project. We want a we want a release ready version of our project. Then we'll go on to creating the app store, listing all of that, publishing it, and we will have a real published app this week, and a real app store. Then we need to talk about version two. There's things that we could still fix. There's things that we could still add. What's the process of releasing a version two, a version three? of our project. And then toward the end, that's week three, and then other th considerations like marketing and publicizing and reaching all the platforms. We've been focusing on Android, but of course our project can work on all the platforms, and I'll introduce some new things about iPhone-specific development. Then the class will be over before you know it. Uh, so, everyone should have a copy then of the project. I'm going to I'm going to run it quickly in the browser so that I can show what my game plan is for today. As I've said, uh, I took a little bit of time outside of class to fill in a couple of of gaps in the project. I didn't change anything functional wise. Uh, I simply added some placeholder text that was missing previously where we had some gibberish or blank screens. I filled that in. I just copied and pasted some text 
from the website, the college's website, so that we don't have this, these empty gaps of content. I'm just going to load the project in the web browser, Taco Run Browser. And there's a little bit of text there, a little intro text besides welcome. Um, art screen, put some text in for these art classes. They could have pictures, of course, they could have video. It's pretty elementary. Getting that in there, updated the calendar with the latest dates. Um, <coughs> on computers, again, filled in some content there. That could have more content. This is fine. MVP. That's it. That's what I that's what I did with the app. Actually, one other little thing. Let me explain what I did. That is this is a functional thing. It's not a big deal. If we look at the code of the index file, if you got a copy of my latest version, if you didn't get my latest version, that's okay. Just watch this. In my code of the index file, if you look at our our uh, JavaScript libraries. Anything different? No? Nope. Okay, moving on. No, just kidding. Uh, I changed it to jQuery 1x. We were using 2x, and the latest one that's out is 3x. Our version of jQuery Mobile 145 is not quite compatible with jQuery 2 and 3x. So I changed over to the jQuery 1x branch. And it's not that it's really downgrading it, it's that there used to be a version of jQuery 1x and 2x concurrently being released at the same time to try to have both, to try to have feet in both worlds. The world before the dominance of mobile devices and the world of the dominance of mobile devices. So the 1x branch was for a world with a lot less mobile devices, the 2x was a world for more mobile devices, and now the 3x branch merges them back together into one. So I changed the library here and I put it into our folder of 1.12.4, the latest version of the 1x branch. We were using the latest version of the 2x branch and we saw the project work perfectly except for one little thing. If you recall, it was very anticlimactic when we did this on line 368 or so, which was that when we were setting up the deletion of the database, I said, let's make a little pop-up happen to have it pop up to the user in a nice, cool jQuery mobile way that says, all data deleted. And it didn't work. And we looked at our debug console, and it gave us some weird error. Looking further into it, I was seeing that jQuery 145 is not quite compatible with the latest versions of jQuery. So I put this back to 112, and now that thing works. Um, just to show that it works and what it is and how useful it is, I changed the jQuery library down to that. This, of course, was just icing on the cake. It was not really necessary for the project. We could accomplish the same thing in other ways. Uh, so this little change here, a little bit of a functional change. <coughs> And so what we're going to do is take advantage of this by doing more of what I had here. Uh, let, us, let me remind you what that is. I'm just going to add some quick data to my database. It's just some very basic class saved. Here's the new part. If I were to click the warning button at the bottom, and then remember this delete thing, I say, okay, never mind, don't delete. This is what we were trying to get to work previously, a little pop-up that happens on screen that looks like it's part of the design. Icing on the cake. If I go over to delete and click OK, give me the feedback, all data deleted. We could have accomplished that in other ways, but jQuery Mobile has this functionality to make that pop-up happen. And then the database has been cleared out. That was able to work because of jQuery 1x. And it works by having a div within the article, within the section of where we want it to show. So from this warning box, we added two divs, data roll pop-up. We were using data roll page and so forth. Here's data roll pop-up. It needed a class, UI content as before an ID so we can reference it, and then whatever text or picture 
even if we wanted to appear. And so when I when I canceled it from deleting the database and this popped up canceled, that's where that's coming from. And when I went ahead and deleted the database, that's where that's coming from. And the way it works in our JavaScript code, if you open your Kodika.js file, at the bottom line 235, well 234 and 235, I, I added 234, everything else was the same. Uh, but 235 was where we said, okay, via jQuery, we're going to reference the db canceled div. We're going to use a pop up method to open it with a little bit of positioning. <coughs> I noticed that it didn't really transition. And previously to that, as brushing up with the documentation, it said you need to sort of instantiate that this is a pop up first and then are able to make it pop up. I also did that on the previous line up on 226. I added simply dot popup to the particular div that I want to behave like a popup. My point is, let's take advantage of this functionality now to give the user a little bit better feedback when they add or modify a class. Right now when they add a class, it gives us that, which gets the job done, but it's a little basic. And that worked when we were back on the regular old pouch project. Now that we're in jQuery Mobile, we have more functionality. Let's take advantage of that. So we're going to set ourselves up for class A to pop up nicely via the pop-up method of jQuery Mobile. So to set ourselves up here, we need to create a div that will display this message. Then we need to write the JavaScript code to make it pop up at the right time. Let's go over to our index file. And in order for these pop-ups to work, we should add these divs within the article of the section where we want them to appear. So that would be then in the Add a Class Screen section. Starting on line 336, that's where our My Classes section is. Inside of the article, so it's going to be, give yourself a new line, 351. I'm going to create a div here. Within the div, we'll keep it on one line. We can put it on multiple lines, of course. But since it'll just be a simple message, I'll keep it on one line to save space. And we'll say class added. That's the message that will appear. It's not limited to just text. It could be pictures. It could be any content. It could be a table. It could be a whole screen that takes over, like any other pop-up. But this is best suited the way we're going to use it. It's just a simple bit of text pop-up. Data role, pop-up, uh, class UI dash content, like the article would have. The article had role equals main, class equals UI content. And then ID, so we can reference it via the JavaScript. Uh, we'll call these, we call those db deleted, db canceled. Uh, we'll call this db saved. While we're here, I'm going to copy that whole line to save myself a little bit of typing and then add it again right below it. Because here I can construct a few different messages. We're going to have a message when the class is saved. We're going to have a message when the class is modified. We're going to have a message when the class is deleted. Actually, one more time then. Class added. Class updated. Class deleted. Those little messages will pop up to the user. They need unique IDs, of course. DB saved, DB updated, DB deleted. Actually, did we already use deleted? DB deleted, yes, we already used that one. So we will use DB updated, DB deleted, 
C deleted class. Everything else still stays the same. It's the same data role classes. A, new, a unique ID, of course, and the message that they're going to say. So make sure all of these are inside of the article of the section of the add a class screen. Save the HTML file and then we'll go over to your codica.js file. And we're going to need to do something like what is already there. We'll copy and paste that just for saving our little bit of effort. Uh, go to line 226 and select lines 226 and 227. We need to find the spot where the message appears to the user that says class saved. So going back somewhere to find our add class. Line 119. We had it, we had the div that we were borrowing to display class saved. Let's comment that line out. You can delete it if you want, but let's comment it out. And right after it on line 120, paste the, the two lines that we copied from below. Uh, jQuery to find a reference to the div db saved dot popup method as is. That basically activates that div as a pop-up and then the next one db save dot pop-up this time we're saying open it and you can leave these if you want we can go look up what are the possibilities where do we position it to and what animations but that that's going to give a simple pop-up for uh, feedback to the user that there has been no error in saving the data, so let them know. Save all your files and I'm gonna run this in Taco Browser. Taco Browser to hopefully make it come up faster, and, or you can run it, of course, in your device, virtual or real. And what we're trying to do here is if you go to add a class, and then you add a class, save class, you can pop a class add. Click outside to close it. So some feedback to the user. Instead of using the sort of basic uh, div there, when I add a class, give me some more visually interesting feedback. There's another one we'll need to do eventually. Uh, remember these various errors, these error messages could appear. I'm trying to save a class with no ID and it gives me back something there that will give a better message to eventually. But the other ones uh, that we've got are then to update a class and to delete a class. We've got the divs with the content. We just then need to attach 
the proper JavaScript at the right place. So it's going to be those 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 two same lines. Clear fields, show classes. Okay, update class. Delete class. Okay, so I see the delete class function starts on 162. On one, uh, 162, so we've got db.remove, it removes the class if positive result or negative. We didn't even really give any user feedback. It, it got deleted and then it updated the table so we'll say we will do the console output, update the table, and then I'll paste in all of those items for the pop-up. Here we change that to db um, deleted class. That's the name of our div over in the HTML file. And then I've got the pop-up for if I modify a class. If we scroll down a little bit, we'll see the function update class. Here it is, line 212. Uh, we have basically show class. We, we did the change, show the class. I'm going to break that actually a little bit more to be a little more readable. Uh, right before the, the name of the function, I'll press enter to break it. And then just for consistency, I'll break the curly brace there. So there's the starting curly brace of the callback function. And we just had it to update our, we had it updating our uh, table, and then end of the function and end of the port. Okay, so I'll put a semicolon at the end of that line, and then paste in, oops, paste in the pop-up functionality. Was db modified, db updated. So now I've got a pop up for the um, for the updated result. Once I change the class, it'll update the table and also give me a message. Give the user a message. So I'll run this in the browser.
Show my classes. I've got one class. If I choose to delete class, VVCCV, delete class, it did it, and it popped up class deleted. If I then wanted to edit this class, update pops up, class updated. So now I'm giving this user feedback that uh, is more in line with the aesthetic of the project. And lastly, lastly, we'll give some feedback for trying to save a class without typing anything in. And I think also. Is, don't we have something that if you try to save the same class, I'm going to try to save class A again. I put a class A and I want to save it again. Yeah, and then we get a feedback document update conflict. Okay, so we've got some, we've got some possibilities there to give back to the user um, possible errors. Let's check how we did that. That's over on the save class. Add class. That's over on the errors. Okay. On errors. Line 125. On error. We didn't get too far in, in really dealing with error messages. We just had the error message appear to the user. Uh, I was able to generate two kinds of errors. One error. ID is required for puts. So I was trying to put an empty class. Also, I didn't clear out the fields. We have a function to do that, so we, we need to use it. Um, then I generated another error, which is document update conflict. That's basically saying you're trying to save the same class that already exists. Based on the JSON object, the error JSON object that we're given back, we have a way then to display multiple messages depending on the situation. Can anyone figure it out by based on what I have on the screen? Status. 409 means document update conflict, and 412 means um, ID is required. So we can, for example, use switch to um, evaluate possibilities of errors, and then based on which particular error happens, display a nicer pop-up to the user. I think we'll do it that way. Let's uh, create the HTML, what the pop-up will be first, and then the JavaScript to make it pop up. So I'll go back to Notepad, HTML, and within the same uh, section, line 353, I'm going to copy any of those a couple more times. And the possibilities are, for example, if I'm trying to save a class with no ID, that's basically, uh, please fill in all fields. If they don't fill in the name of the class field, at least you can't save a class. So we're going to have a message that says, I guess we'll say maybe error, please fill all fields. The other possibility is if you're trying to save a class that's already been saved. I suppose we could say error class already saved. Class already exists. Class already saved. And then some unique IDs. DB error. Um, ID. This is based on the error 
generated from no ID and DB error conflict. So same syntax as the previous ones that worked. New IDs and new message. If we have those, then we'll go back to the JS file. This is all within this else statement, the else part of the if else statement. Uh, I will hide line 125. We're no longer going to use that div as our placeholder to give some feedback. Instead, we're going to uh, create a switch. To remind ourselves, we used switch down here when we were dealing with possible errors of um, oh, uh, possi possibilities of deleting the database. Remember the syntax for switch. We start with switch, something to evaluate, possible cases, and then results. So our Ours will be, I'm going to comment out the, the comment, or the error, and then we'll type switch, open close, parentheses, open close curly brace. Then we've got, um, We'll fill in the skeleton first. We've got case, which could be case A, colon, something that happens, break, case B, colon, something that happens, break, uh, default, in case there's another possibility we haven't thought of yet. So that's our skeleton. Don't forget the curly braces. It's the skeleton or skeleton of our switch statement. We can have as many of these as we as we can or as we want. We have 412 and 409 to account for, and there must be some other ones that we can look up. So the first case will be 409, and the second case will be 412. Those come from the error object that we get back from up here, db.put, error or result, it gives us back an object. The error object could have a possible 409 or a 412. That's what this is saying here. You've got an object status 412, status 409. So what we're evalu evaluating for in the switch is error.status, the status property of the error object. It's called error because we called it error up here. Dot status, it's the property of that object. So switch will check, okay, what is the current error? specifically the current status uh, property. And then case 409, case 412, or if we didn't think of one, default case. Four oh nine is document update conflict. 
So I'm going to borrow my lines again to make the pop-up happen, 120 and 121. Those will be now inside of case 409. And uh, what do we call this thing? DB error uh, ID. No, no, not ID. Uh, conflict. Error conflict. So in the case of error 409, there's a conflict that you're trying to add a class that already exists. Uh, we want to do all of that. I'm still in 409, and I also want to clear fields. What they're trying to add here, that class already exists. Not valid, so we'll clear the fields. We, we defined a function previously, and we'll clear those fields. So we're calling it again. Four twelve. is that you're not adding an ID, so db error ID. Show the error ID pop-up, clear those fields. We didn't create a div for a third possibility of errors. So here, let's make a big old annoying pop-up, uh, unknown error. Contact your admin. Contact the developer. Our app doesn't have any way to contact the developer at the moment. That is something we will add. That will actually be most likely the version 2.0 version of our, of our app. Uh, we will have the ability uh, for the app to send us an email and also share to social media. That will be for version 2. So I don't have an idea what could be wrong here. And then we'll... Uh, We'll be getting some feedback back on top here on console log error. So as we beta test it more, we might be able to figure it out. Yes? Yes, single summary. That probably wouldn't cause any errors because technically that's an empty blank line and then end of statement again. So let's see. Uh, I think here then we can save everything. I'm going to run this in the browser. Mine works. Then we'll check. We'll, we'll pause to check people's code. But here we're using the the functionality of jQuery Mobile to give us some better user feedback. All of that worked by using the one X branch of jQuery. I was looking up um, the over at jQuery Mobile, when's 1.5 coming out? 1.5 has been coming out almost for a while now. And I was looking over at their GitHub, and just a few days ago, they've been saying jQuery Mobile 1.5 is coming soon. I've been saying that for a few months. But sooner it might be soon. So uh, there might be a jQuery Mobile 1.5 before the end of our course, and again, that's nice, but we will not be updating our app in the middle of production. We don't want to live that dangerously. So let's see here. My class. I'm trying to force error messages here. I will not add anything to the empty boxes. Save class. Pop up error. Please fill all fields. Yes, technically I could do this. It'll give me the error. Yes, technically I could do this and not fill anything else. And that won't be an error because I'm only checking for an empty ID. And let's say I'm trying to save class A again. I've already got class A. Save class, error, class already saved. 
clears the fields, gives me the message. I want to edit a class that is empty. Update, get the back, get the update, the pop-up. Right, so our um, save a class is a little bit nicer. Anyone need any help with their code? Yeah, let's take a little pause here. Uh, so here's the code so far. And we'll go in and add some more pop-ups. Thank you. 